Hello, this is Eric Haver with the Microsoft Surface team. And I'm Joe Englund from Vectorform. And I'm Philip Scottman from Vectorform. Great, and today we're going to take a look at the Settlers of Catan on Microsoft Surface. Yes, this is the officially licensed version. Vectorform has been working with Catan and Mayfair to bring this together. I need some grain. Does anybody have any grain? I have clay. Alright, so let me use it. Right, my turn. Yeah, I need green too. Oh, I get to move around, but I can steal. I don't have any, just so you know. Green, don't you? Alright. Microsoft Surface is found in hospitality venues where you expect to find games, right? That's correct. And the Settlers of Catan is often that iconic board game that people recognize. It's often the first gateway game they play. So we thought the Settlers of Catan on the Surface would be a great way to introduce people to the Settlers game as well as the Surface. So what if I've never played Settlers? So when you first come to Catan and you're not familiar with Catan, we actually give you uh, a how to play section in, in the Settlers. And this gives you the basic objectives of the game as well as how to use the interface. Notice the little, the hands here. So this is how to play Catan. And it's a very quick read, if you notice, just a few slides. And that's how you play, all right? And we also have other modes in there that'll help teach you how to play. So here we have the game board, and why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done here with the digital space on Surface? Sure. So this is the digital rendition of Settlers of Catan, and we're really trying to stay true to the analog version that you would buy in the stores. And to do that, we kind of kept the same imagery as you see in the Settlers. We kind of kept the same feel. Notice that all these little pods around here are movable. They're not fixed like some UIs. This is the surface. We want to use natural gestures. You know, when we talk about natural gestures, when you build things in the real game, you actually have pieces you put on the board. And so to put pieces on the board, you just kind of drag them out of your pod. And, and notice how when Eric moves around, that road kind of gives him a hint as to where things should go. So if he drops it, there you go, he's built a road, the resources are automatically paid. That's one of these cool things about the computer interaction, that it's better than the analog. You don't have to keep track of a lot of these things. So keeping with the analog version, we've also implemented real cards. And on the surface, you don't want people to see what kind of cards you have. So we have a cool, couple cool ways to kind of hide your cards from them. The first one is you can use your hand and cover, use your hand as a shield, and use the flip card button to see what you have. That way people can't really tell. Another cool way really takes advantage of the surface's vision system and uses tagged visors. So from the front of the visors, people can't see, but through this clear part, they can. So if you throw your visor on top of your cards, it's like an x-ray and you can move this up and down and see what kind of cards you have. We actually have a cool mechanism down at the bottom that came from some of our user testers where they wanted to see what kind of cards they have but still maintain this fan on top. So we have the little legend, the little icons at the bottom to really show them, or to really just show you what you have. Now, can I look at Philip's cards over here? No, that's the cool part about these tags is that only Philip's, only Philip's visor works on Philip's cards. So let's talk about trading a little bit. To keep with the real game, we actually have these real cards, and we allow real gestures with these cards. For the purposes of this demo, let's go ahead and flip over our cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm looking here, and I want to get a development card, and I just need wheat, and I have a sheep to trade you. Okay. So will you I'll give, give me you wheat? That. I'll All give right. you wheat. I'll take your sheep. And so it just folds into my deck. And so now I want to get my development card. Philip, how do I do that? Well, there's a bank that's stuck right here, and you can just drag the... So I just the grab the card just like this in my pile, and it deducts all the resources from my pile. Right. So one of the things I really like is the ways in which you've enhanced the game and added this sense of hyper-realism. For instance, this resource card's here. I can just take this and throw it off, and it just automatically docks into the side. Right. We, we did that because we didn't want to obstruct the game board. Okay, these resource cards, the resource bank is a very important part of the game. It tells you where you can buy your development cards, it tells you how many resources are out there and, and what you trade for. But it's one of those things that you don't need all the time. So when you don't need it, you just put it away. When you do, you just pull it back out. And that works with any of the items here. Exactly. Great. And we also have another shortcut for building costs. Building costs are one of these things that people can memorize, but sometimes they forget how much a city is. Is it three grain and two ore, or is it three ore and two grain? And we have a nice little shortcut here that doesn't obstruct anybody else. Mm -hmm. doesn't require to reach across the board. You just bring it up, bring it down, and there it is. Great. 
So why don't you talk about some of the other ways in which you've enhanced the game? We've also in included what we call the virtual dice. And so as you can see here, the dice automatically move to that next player. So they know it's their turn. There was a little notification there. Now I have to do is drag the dice, roll them, and there you go. And we rolled. Whenever we bring up these kind of digital games, people always talk about dice. Yes. You do digital dice, you have <laughs> physical dice. Have you solved right. for that? Yes, we did. We did both. So to see that, we're going to cut to Philip's turn, and he's going to roll... Real up. acrylic dice. Now this just did in computer magic here, and you just kind of randomly assign something. There are actually tags assigned to each side of these right. die, right? Yes. Um, the die is laid out the same way as a, as a regular six-sided die. So if you turn it, you'll notice that the numbers are different. Okay, but we side. also have this ring around here so that uh, people can't kind of game the game. This ring is what was officially rolled, but they can still move the dice around, prove that they were these, these are real dice. So this stops Philip from throwing the robber at me. Right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of robbers, Philip just rolled a robber. And what do you do here now? Well, I just have to figure out who to steal from. And I think Joe is a good target. Yeah, he's I... a good target, and also you are a good target. I can actually move him so I can block both of you from... Ah. Uh, no, so, so the game automatically shuffles the cards. Oh, because and... they're in a specific order to right. kind of help sort them out. And okay. now Philip can go ahead and steal one nice. from Eric. Uh, he stole one, yeah. All right. So another important part of the Settlers of Catan is what we call maritime trade. That's where you trade in some of your resources for a specific one from the resource bank. And Philip has a lot of resources. How does that work? I think I need some clay and I can build a road. So if I just drag the bank here, I can get rid of some wheat that I don't need and get some of the clay from the bank. So everything is automatically traded for you. Yep. Right. And now Philip can build his road. So yep, I can build it. Where should I go? So as you can see here, Philip's in a position to win the game this turn. If he plays that knight, he can get the largest army, and he has enough resources to build the city, which would get him the 10 points and the victory. I just play the knight card. Really want to play it, thank you. Right. Do I want to steal from someone? Always. Okay. I have enough resources to actually build a city. To win the game. Yeah, yeah. this is the end. So now that Philip has won the game, we want everybody to get recognition for the effort they put into it. So the first thing you do is just sign your name. And one thing that every Catan player wants to see are the stats. See how many points they've gotten, see how the resources rolled out. So Philip can look at his stats really quick, and it shows you a bunch of things, like your, your victory point breakdown, the development cards you bought, and your resource breakdown, how you got them and how you lost them. Now finally, one thing that Catan players really want to see is the leaderboard. How do they do against everybody else? Yeah, so the leaderboard shows you the results of everything that happened in the game, like uh, the number of uh, games that you you play, the number of rounds that you have played, and the number of victory points that you have totaled uh, over all the games that you played before. And that signature that we did earlier is this right in there. Yeah. Well, this leaderboard is a bunch of cool little facts that you normally don't know when you're playing a game. So, for instance, mine the most ore per game. Shave most sheep. Shave most sheep. Those are things that you don't generally know, but they're cool <laughs> facts about the game. So that was the Settlers of Catan on Microsoft Surface. Where are we going to see this next? Well, we're going to show a version at Gen Con, and we're also going to show another version at PAX. And when are Surface customers going to be able to get a hold of it? Well, we're really working hard towards a holiday season release. And if I want more information, where can I go? Well, you can go to our website, www.vectorform.com, or you can send an email to sales at vectorform.com. You can also call us at area code 248-777-7777. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Joe, and great job on this game.